G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday morning here in Australia and markets down ever so slightly again. Kind of hovering around that kind of $2.3 trillion mark. We've been a little bit over, we've been a little bit under, so we've dropped half a percent now. And again, things are looking a little bit scary. Bitcoin dominance rising and people are getting out of altcoins, getting shaken out. That's what happens, you know. It's, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, it's, you know... It all depends on your outlook on whether it's a good time to buy or not and what uh, what's a good buy. Now, I told you that I'm really not focusing on altcoins too much the other day, and that's true, but I did say I would you know, buy a few altcoins here and there, and so that's what I did today. So I'm trying to get a better portfolio spread in metaverse and gaming sort of stuff so what i did is i went out and bought some of those coins today now not too much really just a very small amount and it's just because i want to increase my size in those coins all my other coins i have a fairly good position in i bought a long time ago and i've uh, yeah got a good portfolio spread in those but i don't in some of the gaming metaverse sort of coins so that's what i did went and bought a a little bit of them but again it was a very small bit because i am still not convinced that we're completely out of it yet but if i'm wrong well then i'm buying at a discount we'll get to that shortly but again i'm not really buying much at the moment other than bitcoin i'll still put money into bitcoin and again every now and then when we get to levels where i think oh this is still a pretty good price to buy some other altcoins at uh, then I'll buy some. So, you know, like if Solana gets down to $150 and I'm buying some Solana. Uh, and if it gets down to $100 and I'll buy some more at $100 and so on and so on. But really, my kind of, you know, weekly, fortnightly money that I'm putting into crypto, I'm really only going to focus on Bitcoin on that kind of weekly, fortnightly thing. And then I'll just have cash sitting on the sides. And when, again, we get down to certain prices, then I'll put a little bit more into altcoins on occasions. And really the only space that I'm kind of really lacking in is uh, not so much lacking in, but I, I need to build up to get a more even spread in my portfolio, a good balance was metaverse and gaming. All right, so volume is down. Again, it's the weekend. That's when it usually happens, but it's also easy to pump the price up uh, really well. Bitcoin price is just hovering around 48,000 now. So, you know, we get up above 50,000, we get down to about sort of 47,000, but hovering around about 48 at the moment. And gas prices have gone through the roof. So I'm not sure what's happening there. Again, maybe people panicking, getting in and out of stable coins and things like that. Uh, there could be something going on that I just haven't been able to see yet. It's a very early year, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, the reason I'm doing the video so early is because I have to go to work today and I simply won't be able to get one done later. So, all right, what's done well in the last 24 hours considering the market's down ever so slightly? And there's always outliers we can see. I mean, look, Cardano's up 3%. There you go. All right, Quant, Gala, this is something I bought uh, and I don't like to buy on green, but yeah, it's down substantially from where I bought it anyway. So either way, I'm still happy to buy it. OKB, 8% near protocol. EOS, there we go, uh, starting to move. Uh, Safe Moon. Good Lord, be very careful is all I'll say. Flow, and there we go, ADA. So there's a couple of movers, and look, a couple of double-digit movers, which is nice, which is nice, <laughs> which is nice, but there's always kind of outliers. What hasn't fared well, though, considering the market's down? All right, so there we go. Olympus down, Terra Luna uh, coming down. I get got up to like $70. That's to be expected. Things go up, then they come down. Same as Cardana, had a really big pump, and now it's coming down. E-Gold made some moves. Sell. Matic, there we go. Got up to $2, I think nearly twenty thirty, and now coming down uh, to around the $2 range. Is the bottom in, though, is what we're all really sort of wondering, though, uh, and that is the million-dollar question. Well, number one, have a look at the fear and greed index. This is when I want to buy, when everyone is most fearful. Now, it doesn't mean, again, whatever cash I have, I just simply throw, you know, as the saying says, you know, I don't throw the kitchen sink at it just because we're in fear and greed. But I like to buy some stuff when people are like this. And when do I like to sell stuff? When it's over here, up in the high greens, when everyone else is buying that's when I want to be selling. Now, not everything, but I just want to be taking some profits. If you generally follow that kind of rule of thumb, you can do okay, but you're not going to sell at the exact top. And if you do, trust me, it is luck, it is not skill, and you're not going to buy at the exact bottom. 
Again, if you do, it was luck. It was not skill. I mean, that's not true. There might be an element of skill into it, but it's mainly luck. Mainly luck. Sorry, struggling with English again today. It really is just about being somewhere sort of, you know, thereabouts. Like if the absolute top for, you know, Bitcoin was 69,000 and you sold at 64,000 or 62,000, you've done pretty well. You were close enough. And then if the low, let's say Bitcoin goes down to, I don't know, $11,000. And I'm not saying that's the mark. It could go lower, but let's say it goes down to $11,000, but you were buying at 14 or $15,000 you've still done extremely well you've been so close you don't have to be within you know dollars or a hundred dollars you don't even have to really be within like literally a couple of thousand dollars like two or three thousand dollars if you manage to get within that range then that is an unbelievable buying congratulations but again just thereabouts so you sold at sixty six thousand and you started buying back in at a you know fifteen thousand i mean look at that spread Let's say you had a whole Bitcoin, sold at 64, bought back in at 15,000. I mean, you can now buy, you know, three, nearly four and a bit Bitcoins with that money. Now, there's going to be taxes and things in there that you'll have to factor in at some stage. So maybe not quite the four and a bit, maybe three and a bit. But that is good enough rather than, you know, I had to sell closer to 69 and I had to buy closer at 11,000. That really is pure luck. Not even the best traders in that can regularly do that. On occasions, they might do it. But again, there's more luck than simply skill involved in that. So while there's maximum fear, and we are at maximum fear, what I want to show you is this is over the last year. We're at 16. The lowest we got to, I think, was like 9 or 8 or something like that. Over here, we got to 10. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got to 9 or 8 or something like that. Got into single digits. Let's go over the max. The max that the fear and greed index has been going, and that's since 2018. And here you can see it was super low down there. I mean, I don't know what that is. That's going to be 8 or something like that. There you go, 8. We're at 16. We're halfway, you know, to getting down to 8, which is the lowest we've really seen in a long time other than this. Here we go. What was this? This is going to be something crazy. No, come on, get over here. Anyway, I'm sure that's going to be six or seven or something like that. We are traditionally very, very low at the moment. So can it go lower? For sure it can go lower, and it can probably go a lot lower. I'm not talking about the fear and greed index. That can't really go much lower, considering it's out of 100. But that's what I mean. We are at 16. That is super low. That is near maximum fear and pain. I want to be buying when we see this kind of stuff. When we're down here... I want to buy again. I don't just throw all my money at it. I scale in in case we continue to go down. And if we go up, then I still don't mind scaling in on the upside because we're still at a super low spot. What usually happens after we get down here? Up, up, up. Can we come back down? Yes, but up, up. This is the kind of time that I like to buy. I'm never offering you financial advice because I am in absolutely no way, shape or form a financial advisor. But since I've been, you know, understanding how market works and it trades against general human psychology, you know, this is when I want to buy. Again, I'm not throwing everything at it. I'm not throwing all my money at it, but I am definitely scaling in. Because if we go lower, then I don't want to have thrown all my money in to see, you know, 50 or 60, 70, 80, 90% downside from here. But scaling in, if I lose, you know, let's say I've got $400 uh, in total to invest in the market. Well, maybe I put in 50, 80, $100 of it. So only a quarter of what I have, I put in. So then if it goes down 90%, I've only lost 90% of $100. I've still got 300 of that 400 left. And again, you can scale that to any amount you want. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't have to be that. It's not only put in a quarter. It can be less than a quarter, and it can be more than a quarter. You've really got to work out what's going to be best for you. But the last thing you'd want to do is drop your entire 400, if that's what you've got, and then see 90% loss. So you've turned 400 into you know 30 bucks that's going to really hurt. And you're going to be going, damn, I wish I had more money to invest right now, or you're freaking out, whatever it is. Well, if you didn't put all of it in, you would have more to invest. You constantly want to have money on the side. You never want to have all your money 
in the market. Now, I'll tell you right now, I've got most of my money in the market. I don't have a lot of cash sitting on the side because I'm continually buying dips and things like that. But, I, you know, I get my money coming in sort of weekly, fortnightly, and then so I continually build up my cash reserves. But again, I'm sort of, I'm buying at the moment because of the dips and things like that. All right, this is really what I want to focus on though. The Bitcoin chart. We seem to be holding all right around this range, but it is looking shaky. In all fairness, I really do think at the very least, we're probably going to come down to 42,000. Again, we're going to revisit it. I think we're going to bounce around and come down there. But I'm not 100% sold on that is what's happening. As I said the other day, I've always got, you know, what do I think is going to happen? And what do I do if that's completely wrong and something opposite happens? So for me, I don't think we're in a bear market. I just think the the conditions with Evergrande, you know, and new strains of the virus and things like that, that is really shaking the market at the moment. And look, there's definitely market manipulation going on. This is market manipulation. This huge wick, that is 100% market manipulation. But now they're probably looking at that going, all right, well, we can probably push the price down there because the big players, like I said, they buy OC, OTC, they get a discount, they can then come and put some of that on the spot market and push the price down and then they can buy even cheaper again in OTC. So they can. that's how they can manipulate the market. I'm not saying that's the only way it can be done and that is what's happening, but that is something that can happen. And I just get the feeling like that is what's happening. They want to buy more Bitcoin. They just don't want to buy it at 69,000. If they can push it down to 42, they will. But they don't want to push it down so low that whatever price they were buying in now suddenly becomes worth, you know, a thousand times less. Again, they will scale in. They will do, you know, similar things to what I said. They got a hundred million dollars and Bitcoin's at $69,000. They put $20 million in. They buy some Bitcoin OTC and then they, again, keep most of it but maybe you know sell like a quarter of it uh, on the spot market to push the price down when it gets down to 50,000 because they were buying in at 60,000 they put another 20 million dollars into the 100 million they had now they've put 40 million into it and again keep selling it gets down to 40,000 then they put another 20 million in and remembering when they're selling they're getting some money back as well and so that's what they can keep doing until eventually the 100 million is spent but instead of paying 69 million, they got in at 60, they got in at 50, they got in at 40, then maybe they got in at 30, then maybe they got in at 20. And so they've scaled in on the way down. They've been able to push the price down and now they have a whole stack of Bitcoin and then they can simply just let it ride after that and it can start to push its way up. Now again, I don't know if they want to push Bitcoin down to $20,000 considering they were buying in at 60, 50, 30 and 40. Maybe they do, but that is things that they will do. They're looking much longer term than the retail player. Retail player cannot handle that kind of volatility. And generally, even these kind of markets aren't, you know, traditional finance. They're not used to those kind of swings, but they are starting to get used to it. They're starting to understand and they will suffer through that volatility because they know once the upside comes and they've seen the history of Bitcoin and plenty of other cryptocurrencies, it really is going to pump up exponentially. And again, if Bitcoin was once basically 70,000, you bought it at 60,000, that's a pretty good discount. You bought it 50,000, that's an even better discount. You bought it 40,000, that's an amazing discount. You bought it 30,000 and 20,000, I mean, you have done extremely well because once the Bitcoin you were buying at 20,000, which was you know the most amount because you're getting the most of your money, and that makes it back to 70,000, you've tripled that money. The Bitcoin you bought at 30,000 gets up to 70, you've doubled that money. The Bitcoin you bought at 40 that gets back up to 70, you're just under doubling in money. And you understand now how that exponential effect starts to work. You don't have to sell at the exact top, you don't have to buy at the exact bottom, you just gotta be somewhere about there. You layer into things and layer out of things, it's the best way to do it. But again, work out whether you're a trader or an investor. Me, I'm an investor. I don't put all my money into any one sort of thing because if it doesn't work out, then I've lost everything. And again, even in crypto, you can have a diverse portfolio now. So I've got layer ones, I've got currencies like Bitcoin and Litecoin. Uh, I've got layer twos, uh, you know, Polygon, uh, 
you know, metaverse plays now, uh, all sorts of things, DeFi, you name it. I've got a good basket. Some things have done really well. Some things have done awful and I've had to get rid of and sell. And some things go stagnant for a really long time. Just remember, whatever you're in is not going to go up all the time. It really won't. Not even Bitcoin. It goes down. It can have huge volatility swings. I mean, look here. It went from 64,000 and got down to 28,000. And it did that in what? April... To June it did that in only a few months that is huge volatility but then look what it's done now from June 22nd it went back up and it got even higher in say so what's that June to November that's about five months it more than doubled you're not gonna find that kind of volatility in the stock market and this is hard to handle this you know huge 50% drop but then this massive 100% gain they're pretty easy to handle. They feel pretty good. So again, I'm not 100% sold on this happening. I, it just wouldn't surprise me and I'm not going to panic if it does. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin as it is, you know, continues to get cheaper. I don't know where the bottom's going to be though. I don't know where the top's going to be. So I'm going to continue to scale in while it goes down. And when it finally makes its way back up to 70 sort of thousand, then I will look to scale out if I want to take profits. I don't really scale in and out of Bitcoin. I generally just buy and hold. I've hardly sold any Bitcoin. And I've been lucky enough that when I have sold Bitcoin, it's gone down and I've been able to buy it uh, back for cheaper. Now again, I was nowhere near selling the exact top and I was nowhere near buying the exact bottom, but I was thereabouts and I've cr increased my stack. All right, now the coins that I bought today, put a little bit of money in, not a whole lot. Gala. Now, I literally bought right around here, almost pinpoint perfect. I bought at the top, it was like 78 cents or something like that. So there you go, it got to 83, I bought at 78 cents. Now again, I had no position in kind of gaming and not a lot in Metaverse. So I was like, all right, whatever. This could continue to rocket higher, I don't know. So I'm just gonna put some in, I did. I just bought some today and I now bought for 54 cents. So not quite half price, but about 30% off. So that's not too bad. This could roll over and go much lower. And if it does, so be it. I'll buy some more. I like what Gala's about. I like what they're doing. And if it continues to rocket higher, well, then that's all good. I bought some at 78 cents. I bought some at sort of 54 cents or 59 cents, whatever, whatever it sort of is. I bought some cheaper. I don't know where the market's going exactly at the moment, but I like what Gala's doing. And if this you know, entire crypto space continues to grow like I think it will, hopefully Gala is going to be one of the ones that does well. But if it doesn't, guess what? Well, I got wax, NFTs and things like that. Now, again, I bought November 27th. Whereabouts are we? So I bought around about sort of somewhere around about here. So again, I bought it for, where's the 27th? Right, there we go. So I've bought for around 67 cents, thereabouts. I just bought today for 53 cents. And again, this looks bad. People are probably looking at it, this is awful. It's going to continue to go lower. It's going to drop. Yep, it may do. I, I don't know. I can't tell you exactly where it's going to go from day to day, but I know they've got some good partnerships and things like that going on. So I wanted to build a position and I wasn't buying at the all time high. And if I did, I'm happy to continue to scale in on the way down. Until I get some kind of news that wax is now good, it's dead, it's done, and then maybe I have to accept the losses and sell, then that's what I'll do. But at the moment, I like wax. It sounds like a pretty good sort of project, and I'm happy to continue to buy in. And again, if it goes lower, I buy in, I continue to go lower. And Sandbox, another one, Metaverse and things like that. So the 27th of November, so here we go. I probably bought for about 7 dollars 15 I bought some today for five dollars again 30 percent off and i bought near the all-time high that's okay if i did so be it there's a lot of stuff going on sandbox it's done extremely well i will continue to scale into sandbox as it goes down now again i'm not throwing lots of money at it it's just little bits and pieces here uh, this is the, the one space that I really need to build uh, a portfolio. I don't have too many metaverse kind of stuff. A little bit in the NFT space and social tokens and things like that. But gaming sort of metaverse, I didn't really have anything. I was late to the game. 
and that's the way it's going to be you're never going to be you know super early to everything you're going to be late to some stuff or super early to other stuff so i bought some so that's me i bought a little bit of gaming metaverse sort of stuff today and in a fortnight's time if the market is still continuing to drop i guess we'll have to wait and see whether i'm going to be putting any more money into sandbox uh and you know wax and gala and things like that but bitcoin again i will keep chipping away at it basically all the time i'm always dollar cost averaging into bitcoin but if it's an obvious downtrend that's just been going on for sort of weeks and months on end, then I'm not throwing too much in. I'm, again, just chipping away at things here and there, having that cash waiting on the side for when I feel like we have hit a bottom. And then when I feel like we have, of the, whatever cash I have, I might put in 50% of that cash. And then again, it's a might, probably more 30% of the cash. I go, right here, I'm going to deploy 30% of my cash. Because what happens if it keeps going down and I was wrong? Well... I still got cash on the side and if i'm if i've hit the mark and it continues to go up a lot of people will be thinking oh well imagine you put in your all your cash yep imagine that would have been great i would have and it would have been a fluke that's what it would have been that i had the cash and bought the bottom i always want to have some cash sitting on the side for if it continues to go lower and if it does go lower i don't want to put all my cash in because if i've got no more cash and it continues to go lower and even worse much lower i've got no ability to buy the dip but for me, I will just go back to this. I'm happy to buy when everyone else is fearful. Because yeah, there could definitely be way more downside. But I don't want to be buying here when everyone else is. I want to be selling when that's happening. All right, that's it from me. Sunday, I'm really waiting to see you know, what Bitcoin's going to do. Again, I'm not 100% sold that this will happen. It's just not going to surprise me. But we're already bouncing around in this level, so I really think there's a, you know, at least a reasonable chance we're going to come down and retest that 42,000. Whether we do or not, I don't know. And whether we actually have that capitulation that goes all the way down to 30, sort of three and a half, again, not 100% sold on that. I think that's more unlikely, but I'm not ruling it out. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment very small gain for the day here which is good but hey look if you're out playing the market congratulations to you and let me know down in the comments how you're doing it because i want to be able to do that as well long term i'm pretty good at outplaying the market now short term not so much all right i'm out